Hey there, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to take the user's repository uh, that I've created in my MongoDB video, which I will include the link to in the description. We're going to take a look at how we can take this repository and make it enterprise ready. So turn it into an abstract class that interacts with Mongo directly and each of our subsequent domains can extend it and we don't have to repeat all of this code throughout the project. So to start off, I have cloned the Nest.js Mongo repo that I said I've gone over in my other video. So if you're not caught up to speed yet, you can clone this repository and I'm gonna check out a new branch. Uh, and this is going to be abstract repository. So if you'd like to see the end of the project, you can check this branch out. So coming back into the project now, let's go ahead and open up our source directory. And you can see we have our one users folder, which just has the users repository. And the idea is that we want to remove this duplication if in fact we wanted to create a new domain such as uh, to do's if we had a to do repository we don't want to repeat all of this code so we're going to go ahead and create an abstract repository so the first thing i'll do is i'll create a new folder and i'll call this database i would keep all of my database related code in here and since this is a repository i will create it here and call it entity.repository So the entity repository is going to be an abstract class, as I mentioned, because subclasses are going to have to provide us with information uh, in order to correctly type the class. And we don't want any domain to uh, instantiate this class directly. It's just going to be a template for other subclasses to extend. So we'll call this entity repository, and this is going to be a generic class. We'll take the TypeScript generic form here uh, and we know it's going to extend the document from Mongoose. So let's go ahead and import that. So this generic T will come in handy later and we know it extends the document which will be helpful for some TypeScript features inside of here. So we're going to have a constructor here that uh, will have a protected class member and it'll be read only because we don't want to reassign it. And it's going to be called entity model. And this model is going to be of that type of generic that we specified up above. So if we look in the user's repository, this will be very similar, uh, very similar step to what we're doing in the user's repository constructor, where we are specifying uh, the model that Mongoose is interacting with. So we'll go ahead and import model from Mongoose as well. So this will be important so we can actually, so this will be important so we can actually interact with the Mongoose model inside of this abstract class. So now we can go ahead and actually define the generic or abstract methods that we expect or want the subclasses to have. So in the user's repository, we'll have a very similar setup. One method to find one, find, create, and find one and update. So let's like take a look at what that would look like. So the find one, it's going to be an asynchronous method. Now the parameters, the first parameter will be the entity filter query of type filter query. We can pass the generic type in there. I'm also going to include a, another parameter here, an optional parameter, which will be uh, just an object. And this is syntax to specify that we don't really know the type of the object. Uh, because this is a projection parameter. So, you know, in Mongoose, you can apply projection to your query to specify what fields you want to get back. So, let's see here. The return type on find one will be of the generic type if we found it, or it, it will be null if we did not find it. And inside of here, we will reach out to our entity model and call find one on it. Um, so, we will pass in the filter query, our first parameter here. And let's pass in an options object. So here you could specify your projection. Uh, if you wanted to provide any global projection, so say for example, maybe I didn't want the ID field coming back. 
uh, or the version field. You could specify that here. And then we could also spread the projection parameter that was passed in so that subclasses can uh, add on to this projection. Lastly, we'll call the exec function save. And now we have an abstract find one operation that subclasses can use. So next, let's move on to the find method. And this will have a very similar uh, form as our find one method. So we're going to head and take entity filter query, which is the Mongo query. And like above, this is a type filter query with the generic passed in. So uh, it will look for documents um, with the specified properties in our model here of type T. We can also provide a projection parameter if we liked. For this one, I'll leave it out. Uh, and so we're going to return a promise here. This will be an array or null if we didn't find anything. And we'll go ahead and call this entity model dot find and pass in the query. So now that we have find done, we'll go ahead and set up the method for creating a new entity. So the create entity data is what I'll call it. Uh, this will truly be a type unknown. We don't know what the data will look like uh, because theoretically we could add properties that aren't on our model. Um, that's the beauty of using mongoose uh, and the danger potentially. But here we will specify that we don't really know what the data looks like. And we can specify the return type here is going to be the entity we just created. So inside of create, let's create a variable called entity and we'll call it new on this dot entity model, pass in the entity data. And then we will return entity dot save, which will save the document. We can see here, save the document and it will also return the, lastly, let's go ahead and do a find one and update. So the find one and update is going to be a little bit more complex. We'll have to take the filter query, which we've seen before. So our second parameter here will be the actual data that we want to uh, use to update our entity that we found with the query. So this will be of type update query. And we're going to specify type unknown because like the create uh, entity data up here, uh, we want to allow our subclasses to add properties that necessarily are not on the model. Uh, this is a des design decision, so you could, you know, specify a known type here, but I find it to be more flexible to be able to specify an unknown type. So now we can go ahead and specify a return type of the entity that we've updated or null if it was never found. Uh, and the idea here is that we want to return the entity that we just updated uh, being the new entity, the, the updated one, back to the uh, caller. So to do that, we'll call this dot entity model find one and update. We'll pass in the entity filter query to identify the correct entity, and then the data that we want to update it with. Now, lastly, we'll provide an options object here, and we'll specify that we want the updated entity to be returned, and not the old one. Uh, and it looks like I just have a missing bracket here, and that's it. So now we've done the find one and update method. Lastly, I will just quickly show you how I would implement uh, a deletion method as well. So this will be an entity filter query as well with a generic type. And I like to return a promise of type boolean. So I will declare a uh, new variable here, delete result, which will hold the result of my deletion. So I'll call delete many pass in my filter query to delete the documents that match the query. And then I will return delete result dot delete count. Delete count, deleted count is what we want off of it. Greater than equal to one. So the delete result actually has a property called deleted count on it. Uh, so we say if it was one or more do the documents that we found was deleted, 
then we return true, otherwise it will return false. So that callers know if things were in fact deleted. So now we have finished our abstract repository and we can implement it in a child class. Now this is where the fun part comes in. We go back into our users repository and now we can delete all of this extra code in here because we are implementing that in a common place now. Now the repository is going to extend the entity repository that we just created and it expects the type of the entity. So in this case it is a user document. So this is what the abstract repository will use uh, in order to provide type checking. So if we go ahead and look at the constructor, we can say it's complaining that we're not calling super. So we'll call super and now it expects the model. So we will pass in the user model. And we don't even need to keep this as private anymore because we're only using it in the constructor call. And that is it. That is all we have to do to create a new repository now. So if we had a new domain here, let's say to do's, uh, we would create a to do's repository with the doc to do document. And all we'd have to do is call our constructor. And this central repository uh, is going to host all of the shared code for all of the repositories. So by doing this, we cut down on code duplication so that we only need to go to one place to make changes in the future, and it cuts down on bugs. And notice too, if we go back into our user service here, nothing has changed. We're still calling find one, find create, and find one and update on the user's repository. But now we are extending from the repository we created and we get all of this code for free in a sense. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.